1939, the British government started a secret project to create a poster, this keep calm and carry on poster, that would be used in the event of a uh, Nazi invasion of England. This poster was unearthed in 2000 because, of course, it was never put up. And it's become increasingly popular. There have, there have been hundreds of takeoffs and um, different kinds of versions of this poster. It's also become really popular in its own right. But the question is why? Well, I think that the real reason this has become so popular is because it's this authoritarian voice that's saying, you know, everything's going to be OK. You know, maybe you've lost your job, your house, stuff's going crazy. All you have to do is sort of keep calm, move forward, everything's going to be fine. But the fact is that if you want to start something, if you want to do something, that's not enough. What you really need to do is get excited and make things. This is a poster by Matt Jonas. He saw that original poster, and he took it, and he turned it around, and he used it to create something new. So my talk today is about two things. Number one, getting excited, and then obviously making things. My name is Matthew Bischoff. I'm sure you already know that, but you can call me Matt. So first, get excited. Why, why do you want to get excited? The main reasons that you want to get excited about the thing that you're working on are, number one, it's going to prevent burnout. If you're excited about what you're working on, you're not going to give up as easily, and that's really important because this is hard work. The second reason is that if you're excited, you'll be able to get other people excited about the thing that you're working on. So really, it's important to start from a place of true passion and excitement. So I'd ask you to think about what excites you. If you have a piece of paper and a pencil, you might want to just jot a couple of things down. It doesn't have to be the kind of stuff that I work on, right? It doesn't have to be software. It doesn't have to be an invention. This could be uh, a blog. This could be a podcast. This could be um, your, your theater, your poetry, anything that you think is really exciting. And I think you should focus on doing things around that because the product is going to be better. To get excited, you need to have an idea. And having an idea, Michael talked about a little bit, and, and, and finding a viable concept. I think there are two main ways to get to a really viable concept, a really good idea. The first one of them is to capture thoughts. Now, I, I do this all the time. I carry around a notebook, and I also have my iPhone in my pocket. And whenever I'm having ideas, whether it's you know, right while I'm in the shower, I jump out and I just type something down or jot it down, it's really important to have a universal system that you trust you can capture these ideas into because ideas are really fleeting. And so if you have an idea and you don't grab it right away, it'll just, boop, gone, completely gone. So capturing, capturing your thoughts is one great way to actually focus down onto the idea that you want to build. The second way is actually to steal them. Um, so the app that I developed, I stole the idea. I, I stole it from a guy named Alex Payne. And he posted on his web blog that he had this unfinished idea. And I, I had seen it a couple of years ago, and I, I made a note about it. And then when I was ready to actually build something, I went to Alex and I was like, hey, Alex, remember you posted that idea? Is it cool if we build it? And he was like, absolutely. And the great thing about stealing ideas with permission from the people that you're stealing them from is that you can actually use them to get feedback on the thing that you're making. You can use them as a beta tester. You can use them to actually help shape the product. And Alex has been great in helping us do that. Now that I've talked about ideas a bunch, I want to tell you that ideas are completely worthless. Ideas by themselves are not useful to people. You can't just give somebody idea, an idea and they, what are they going to do with that? So ideas by themselves are completely worthless. What you need to do is turn that idea into a product because the product is an expression of ide an idea that solves a problem. So once you have an idea, absolutely work out how you can make that into something that people will be able to use. That's my second point, make things. 90% of everything that's made is crap including, you know, Pac-Mans that are eating Christmas trees, right? This is a crappy chart. Everything, almost everything in the world is terrible. What we want to focus on is making something that's in that 10%, okay? We want, to, we want to make something that is amazing, that people will say, oh my God, I can't believe that this is actually a great app, that this is, that this is actually a great conference, okay? So think about all the other stuff that you've seen, all the stuff that you hate, and all the stuff that you think is just sort of blah, it's just terrible, and try to make something that is counter to that. In software development, we have this sort of three-step process, right? Make it work, make it right, make it fast. So you don't have to focus on making it perfect when you're just starting, because that's going to be a really easy way to, to just completely lose your train of thought. It's really hard to perfect something before you've actually started making it. 
so that your first step in whatever you're building is just to get it working, right? especially in software. Just get the prototype up. Show it to some people. See what they think. A lot of times, they'll be able to give you some really early feedback you'll be, you'll be able to use to move on to step two, which is to make it right. Actually perfect it, sand all the edges, and then you can worry about sort of more of the performant details, making it fast, making it you know, saleable, all those things. Details matter. Details matter a lot. This is a, an image of uh, Apple t-shirts. And Apple's this huge company with all these different products and all these moving parts. And Steve Jobs, when he was still the CEO of Apple, he focused on even the tiniest, most obsessive details. He cared about the cotton of the shirts that are, that are used by Apple Store employees and sold in the company store. And that kind of being able to focus in on these incredibly specific details is the mark of an amazing entrepreneur and an amazing product person. So if you can focus on not only the big picture when you're building your product or your idea, but also the tiny little details, that'll help you a lot to make something that people will love and people will connect with emotionally. Users are people, OK? When we're, t when we're talking about software development, people always say, oh, well, what, what will the user think? How does the user feel about this? Who is the user, right? They're a person. They're your mom. They're your friend. They're your girlfriend. The user is a person. So if you, if you think about them as a person and not just this number, not just this ideal, perfect user, you're going to build something that's a lot better. In writing, this is called the ideal reader. So you, when you're writing something, you can think of that perfect person who you want to read this, your ideal reader. And I think you should think about that for whatever you're making. Maybe it's you. I think in a lot of cases for entrepreneurs who are building their first thing or making their first thing, they're building it for themselves. And that's great because you're a person and you know exactly what you want. So if you, if you don't know who you're building for, I'd say build for yourself. And if that doesn't make sense to you, then why are you building it? If you're not building something that you're going to love, you're wasting your time. The original iPhone is a great example of a 1.0. Okay? A 1.0 is just the first version of a product, right? The first version of a piece of software or a piece of hardware. What did they do here? Well, what they did was, if, if you had a phone in 2007 when the iPhone came out, you were probably perfectly comfortable texting images to your friends. MMS was very popular. It was on almost every cell phone, right? The iPhone didn't have that option. There was no way to MMS pictures. The iPhone didn't have copy and paste. Every other sm smartphone in the market had copy and paste. And there's a reason why they did that. Because if they couldn't perfect those details, it's better to leave them out. So when you're building your 1.0, there's going to be people, uh, feedback from your, your beta testers and your family and friends, are going, oh, you should add this great feature. You should do this one more thing. You have to have the focus to say, no. That's not, you know what? I'll jot that down in my notebook. I'll write that down on my phone for a later version. But that's absolutely not going to make it into our 1.0. A lot of times, you'll hear the phrase, less is more. I think that's a lie. I, I think that less is actually better. Less isn't more, it's because we don't want more. What we want, there's too much crap in the world. There's too much terrible stuff. So what we actually want is to strip down as much as possible so that we can actually make better products, right? Art Webb, a, a, brilliant, a brilliant graphic designer, said if you make everything bold, nothing is bold, right? If, if, if I was just yelling this entire presentation, you wouldn't hear any of it. You wouldn't understand it. You wouldn't be able to tell what's important. And I think that you should think about that in terms of your product as well. You know, choose to make the things important that are actually important and let the other stuff fade and recede into the background. Above all else, I, I'd say be useful. Now, there will be a lot of people that criticize this point because they will say, well, look at Angry Birds, right? Look at all these great, huge games that aren't very useful. I think that they are. I think that, you know, entertainment is actually a useful thing. So whatever you do, don't, don't just make it don't just make it because you had the idea, right? Figure out how it's useful and who it's useful to, and then build it to be as good at that thing as possible. Make the most efficiently useful game, the most fun game. That's the, the, mo the most useful game is the one that's the most fun, right? So that's a good guiding light. Apple, in their app review guidelines, right? These are the guidelines that are published for developers who are making apps for iOS. They say, we don't need any more fart apps, right? Because there's tons of terrible apps on the store. There's tons of flashlights, right? There's tons of fart apps, and they're not really adding anything. They're not making our lives better, right? So think about not just duplicating something that you've seen because it's easy, but 
actually either building on it or making it better. Like, I would actually argue with this. I'd say we might need, we might need one more fart app if it's the best one, right? We might need an awesome one. So if you're going to do something that's already been done, you're going to have to do it better. In building a product or a thing or an idea, you need a team, right? Even if that team is just comprised of you, it's not just the making that you have to focus on. You have to market it, right? If you're, if you're going to be selling this product, you have to deal with legal and accounting, and there's all of these other headaches. So I would say really think strongly about whether you can maybe pull in some of your friends or even just people that you trust to help you with this stuff because it's a lot of work. And I don't think that you should necessarily be doing all of it. I think teams of two or three probably work better. Don't take money. I'm arguing with Michael's point here about venture capital. I think that for most of the stuff that you want to do, you can get started without taking any money, right? Just get started, make a prototype. And then if you hit a point where, you, where you're completely out of money, you, don't, you, you have nowhere to go, then think about maybe if this is a really viable concept, a really good idea, taking it to somebody to give you money. But money creates a lot of problems. The other, the other point is don't make money, right? It's, it's not really important. If you're making something that you love, that's way more important. So you can make money in tons of other ways, right? You can wait tables. You can do a nine to five and then build something in your free time at night. You don't need to make money on the stuff that you're making. I think that's also really important. I know that it's great. It's great. I, I make money on the stuff that I do and it's, it's wonderful, but that's not why I do it. A lot of people are going to say, Matt, I, I'm, I'm way too busy for this, right? I'm way too busy. You talk about how hard it's going to be. The fact is, you're not that busy. You're really not, right? A lot, a lot of the stuff that you're doing every day, you don't need to be doing. You're watching television. You're playing video games. You're browsing Reddit. All this stuff is great, and it's fine, but if you want to build something, you're going to have to make sacrifices. You're going to have to decide if the thing that you're making is more important, and if it is, it's really easy to just sort of do less of that stuff or sort of drop it, right? We don't have that much time on the planet. So I'd say we should use it to build things that are really awesome for us and other people. This is hard. You're going you're to be terrible at it. You're, the first time you make a prototype, you're going to look at it and you're going to say, you know what, this barely even works. How am I going to build this into a real product? And you're probably going to give up. And I would entreat you, I would beg you not to give up. Please don't. Because I really want to see the stuff that you guys make. Walt Disney said, you don't work for a dollar. You work to create and have fun. And Steve Jobs, one of my personal idols, said real artists ship, right? Actually getting it out the door is the most important thing. In many languages, the word to make and to do are the same word. You, gotta, you actually have to get it out there. You can't just build it in your garage. You have to release it to the world. You have to let other people touch it and use it. If you got one thing from my talk today, I'd hope it, I would hope that it's get excited. If you got two things, I hope it's get excited and make things. That's... Uh, <laughs> That's right here as well, just in case you forget. Uh, thank you so much. <clears throat>